Hello everybody and welcome to Let's Play Legends of Eidolon episode 5. In this first clip I'm just AFKing some frogs. You'll be seeing that a lot in the upcoming episodes. And you'll also see the fact that I waste a lot of resources by AFKing too long. So this is day 2 of the account and pretty much it's just me babysitting the anvil and going over a few things. I do believe I make my third character in this episode. So I level up my capacity, I deposit all my frog legs, I also go to the shop and kind of buy my daily, I guess, buys if you will. And right now I don't buy everything I would want to buy every day, uh, basically because I don't have the money to. But the priority for the purchases are the talent reset fragments and the town portals. And the power statues are a close third. But when you look in the shop, you will mostly need to buy everything. Uh, the upgradable things like the chests are, you know, a one-time purchase, but a lot of these have a lot of different uses for the most part that I will get into uh, later in the series. And I also want to reiterate that the scope of gameplay early on is going to be focusing pretty much on my step-by-step -step process and showing off different mechanics and basically teaching and just kind of going over with what I know so far with the game as a whole. But at the same time, I'm in no rush to get to endgame content, and even in one of the future episodes, I get to the desert, but I have still yet to even pretty much do anything in the desert. I've unlocked, like, alchemy, and as of recording this, I've unlocked the task board, but that's about it. Uh, I plan on staying in World 1 for as long as I can. Also in the last episode, if you notice this clip, I kind of went over the method I use for overflowing copper. You just kind of leave it on the ground and then put it in the furnace and then you pick up the rest. So right here I made the decision to end up using my frog legs that I have accrued and just kind of spending it on my anvil to get more points. Capacity early on is kind of a pain unless you really really like babysit and play actively and you're always checking it. So I end up just putting it into capacity for now. Anvil capacity, especially for most of your characters later on, isn't going to be a big deal because the material upgrade pouches and the gym shop upgrade capacities that you can buy, in fact, upgrade the anvil capacity as well. So keep that in mind, not to, you know, put too many points into capacity. So the bank's not looking too bad right now. And you'll probably notice that I still have the give up on life pants. I do end up dropping them. Or selling them. I think they only go for like 8 silver. So they're not worth too much. And this is I believe another overnight AFK. So basically I didn't get anything special. And it's the same clip as before where I just babysit the anvil. But I also end up making the capacity upgrade for materials. And showcasing that off. So I'll just skip forward. I also cut out the fact that I used mushroom spores and the frog legs I had gotten from AFKing to purchase more anvil points for him, so, and again that basically all went into capacity. So right there I just showed off the recipe for the cramped material pouch. So with some bean slices, some frog legs, and some trusty nails, you can get a pouch to upgrade your capacity, which is very nice, and it'll allow me to not waste as much materials right now. It upgrades your capacity from 25 to 50 baseline. You can see all those statistics at the top where the tab says storage info. I also ended up showing my anvil tab, which was 110 capacity, and now it's 220, so I don't have to babysit it as much, which is nice. So moving on from this clip and on to the next one, I end up showing the furnace upgrades and what you can buy. I do purchase some and one of the upgrades you can buy allows you to get cards uh, every time you withdraw ingots from the furnace. Uh, they will drop and I show that right here. All the different tiers of furnace cards, there's only two in the game right now, but they all come from the different tabs of furnaces. Uh, I'll go into that more as I unlock more tabs to the furnace, but basically all the forge cards give you are smithing experience. I end up just equipping it because faster smithing levels gives me access to more 
materials to craft, and potentially more gold if I want to sell them later on. Right here I'm just showing off some of the tasks I ended up completing, the level 70 and the claim 10 hours one. I end up going for the monster respawns obviously, like I said in the last episode, I'm just going to max that out first. I have yet to figure out what I want to spend these two unlocks on right now, or at least at the time of recording this. I think I ended up going just with the gem drop because I wanted to try and get to the golden anvil as fast as possible and I don't really have everything else right now in terms of materials to make, like the weapons and whatnot. So back here at Stilty Boy, if you noticed, I've been carrying around the five strange rocks that you need to complete his quest, which I believe was his second quest, and this is the third one. This one's kind of tough at first, but once you get to the carrot map, and once you're able to chop the birch tree, it's very simple. You just need two carrot cubes and three bleach logs. And that'll net you a pretty nice necklace early on and the scouting report that is needed for Scripticus. So here is me getting on my second character after that same, I guess, nightly or overnight AFK session. And I'm just doing the copper method where I just, you know, save as much copper as I possibly can by throwing it into the furnace. And I kind of just, you know, show you guys my talents and where they're at right now and what I'm doing with them. I'm kind of putting stuff into wisdom on him since he's a warrior and that's how they get accuracy early on. And I'm starting to need accuracy for the later maps in World 1. Right here, I'm just again babysitting his anvil, which filled up overnight. And that prompts me to make another cramped material pouch for him. Also, which again, he's at 110, and that'll shoot him up to 220. And my rule of thumb for most of my characters, at least on my main account, I don't get them working on anything past Boring Bricks, which you might not know what Boring Brick is right now, but I will show you as I unlock it, which is, it's basically the next material after these nails. Usually I just let my non-archers work on thread, nails, or bricks, and my archers are usually on the harder stuff because they're just faster naturally, especially with their talents. So right here I sell some stuff, some upgrade stones, and my give up on life pants, which apparently are only worth two silver, not eight. I'm trying to save up for the second chest storage, or the number two storage chest, which gives you three more slots in your storage chest. So that's something I eventually buy. So right here I realized I had enough materials to make a copper helmet for my warrior. So I ended up just doing that and it's kind of used for a few crafting recipes later on if I need an extra one or if I don't want to waste the materials later. But at that point I don't think it'll be a problem making a copper helmet. And you can kind of just see what's in my bank at this point. Not too much to tell or anything and the bandana itself sold for like two silver. Right here I made a copper pickaxe and upgraded my little rusty one that's given to you in the tutorial. Or rather the tutorial of mining, I guess I should say. I ended up buying two upgrade stones which I probably should have just saved the ones I had recently and upgrading that to a higher power level. What I like to do every time I upgrade my weapon or especially my tools I like to show the AFK and just kind of see the numbers go up. And as you can see, it ended up doubling my copper gains, which is really good. I'm not sure what mining power gives statistically in terms of like how much efficiency it is, but it's definitely one of the go-to things if you can get your hands on more like power versus more efficiency. Right here I made a cramped mining pouch. And all of these pouches that you're making early on, you're going to need to make a lot of them because you're going to have a lot of characters, but at the same time, a lot of the future pouches are going to require a lot of these older ones. So you're going to be making them a lot, and you're probably going to start remembering their recipes. And remembering them is going to help a lot because it's going to cut down the time it takes to make them. Right here, I ended up opening my cooler chests and getting all these gems and stuff. And I think at this point, this is when I started saving the oysters until the sand dugs were fixed and I was able to kill them. I'm also showing off how many gems I have currently, one at, uh, 168 out of 300 needed for the golden anvil. 
So the upgrade stones, they're good, but they're also kind of meh. They work like half the time, and they're not really worth much, and they're kind of just taking up inventory space. So you'll see me sell them, and then you'll see me use them and stuff. Uh, I just kind of do a little bit of both. Defense is good, but in World 1 and 2, it's not that much needed anymore. And right here, I ended up buying the storage chest, like I said I would. But yeah, back to the upgrade stones. If I had enough space, I probably would keep them. Uh, I keep a lot of everything, basically, on my main, and I'm probably not going to do that with this account because he's going to have a pretty big handicap for most of its lifespan, so I probably won't buy like upgrade stones and whatnot and just keep them in my bank. So this is my third character, uh, basically the same star talent choice, and I just gave him a different hat. I don't know why, I end up selling it anyways. And I immediately go to the anvil and start producing thread. It's not as important as it is or it was on your first character because that can really gimp your progress early on because you don't have these resources in your storage chest by the time you get to your third character. But you should still do it for a lot of reasons and one of the main reasons early on is because every time you level your smithing up you do get a talent point so that's really good. So as you saw, I just went around, grabbed all the quests, basically, and am starting to kill spores. I do go a little overboard, and I kill like 400 of them. Uh, I basically just actively AFK'd and just kind of did something else. So this is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope if you are an American and you celebrated the 4th of July, I hope you had a great one. And, you know, like, comment, subscribe, and thanks for watching. I'll see you around.